This video has been brought to you by the Landscape Certified Contractors Association. Due to the membership support, we're able to bring content to each and every one of you. If you have a topic or a product you'd like us to review, or if you want to become a member, visit www.irrigatortech.com and hope to hear from you soon. Enjoy the video. Today we're going to talk about the Weathermatic Valve. So right now we have a clear valve here and I'm turning the flow control stem. And as you can see it's a non-rising flow control stem which that the handle does that by non-rising it means the handle does not go up but it does lift up in the inside so the diaphragm can move. When you're using a valve, an inline valve or any kind of valve you always want to be able to adjust it. Yes you can turn it off like right here I'm turning it off. But what you want to do is adjust the valve to the sprinkler heads down line. So if I have a valve like this, which is a one inch line, and I have it in the field, okay, and I have six heads on it, I in turn open it all the way up. So I bring it all the way up, and then I in turn turn it down. And as I turn it down, I look at the sprinkler heads, and when they dip, I turn it a quarter turn up. So there won't be any fogging. There'll be fat water drops landing exactly in the pattern of the nozzles and everything adjust. If I have this same valve and I've got 17 heads on it, then I would leave it more open. And then I would just barely turn here and then so it dips. Now if I've got too many heads on the line and I can't even move it before it dips, that means this valve has been undersized and I need to go up to the next size. Maybe uh, if I'm at a three quarter inch valve, I need to go to a one inch valve, maybe from a one inch to an inch and a quarter. If, if I've oversized it, then I can't even adjust the handle. But this is a clear reverse flow valve. So solenoids over here. Solenoids always on the downstream side, in most cases, all the time. On a weathermatic valve, so you have a little arrow here on all your valves. All your inline valves, you're going to have an arrow on the side over here. You're going to have your flow control handle, and this would be your solenoid here. This would be your manual bleed right here on this valve. Okay, so I'm always going to lift it all the way up and then turn it down until it dips, move it up a quarter turn. Okay, I'm going to stick my finger here, and as you can see, I hit a wall. And that means if I hit a wall here, that means this valve is reverse flow. And what reverse means, there's reverse and forward flow. That means this valve fails in the closed mode. That means I can take a diaphragm, which would be like this, a large, any, this is a larger diaphragm, okay? But if I took it and cut it with a knife, as you can see on a weathermatic, it's got a little teeny hole here. So all these are weathermatic valves on this table. It has a little hole, and that adjusts the, let the water flow so it's a well-balanced diaphragm. But if I took a knife and cut it open, okay, obviously you wouldn't do that. But if a rock hit it from inside, it siphoned back, it got old from wear and tear, and you got a tear in the diaphragm, this valve, the wider, the more the valve, the diaphragm tears, the more it forces this valve to close. So if it tore in half on a forward flow valve, that valve would stay open and flood out the baseball field. If you got a beautiful house with a pool and you got a hillside and you got everything looking nice and you're on vacation and the diaphragm for some reason got a tear inside of it, if it was a forward flow valve the water would stay open and then on the valve it couldn't close and the water and maybe the mud would go into the pool into your house. It would erode a hill away. It would do all sorts of damage. But on a reverse flow valve, which Weathermatic is, it means that the, the larger the hole, the more this valve forces itself to close. And it just won't come on. So would I rather have a valve that I go and check and go, wow, the plants look a little dry over there. It didn't open. It's stressed a little bit. Oh, wow, it must be the diaphragm. So if someone calls or you're checking and you go, I got a weathermatic valve and no matter what I do, I give 24 volts to the solenoid. I open it up. I manually bleed by turning this open here and I open it up and it still does not come out, that means your diaphragm has a tear in it and I need to replace the diaphragm. So if I'm a consumer in the field or a technician, I'm gonna say, hey, manual bleed the valve, even give it 24 volts and the valve will not open, that means it's a torn diaphragm on in the field. So uh, just thought I would let you know that this is a clear valve used for demo purposes just for us training. But 
what you've got to think about is here's a cutaway of that valve. Okay, so here's the cutaway. The solenoid is normally right here. And as you can see, it's a wall right here. On normal valves, this goes through, and you can text the diaphragm in the inside on a many, many other forward flow valves. On the Weathermatic, I got my arrow here. I got it cut away. It's coming down. It weeps through this little teeny hole here, opens up inside here, and as this opens here, the water flows over and comes back out again. Okay? So this is a cutaway of a Weathermatic valve and it's a reverse flow. Manual valve, solenoids right here. Okay, and then we saw the clear one. So here's our clear body, okay. Solenoid normally is gonna go here, so the bonnet is gonna go. This is our diaphragm. There's our little teeny hole right here. So this diaphragm is gonna flip right inside here, okay. I'm not normally gonna use some O-ring lube because if I put some O-ring lube lightly around here, just a lightly amount around here, it means that it's sealed. It means that if any water's coming out or any problem I'm going to have, it prolongs and makes the diaphragm last much, much longer. Then you're going to have your spring here on top. Then you're going to take here, pop this on. That's going to snap down. And then we're going to have these screws. They're going to be right here. Now the thing I like about when I'm picking a valve out, there's many inline valves in the field many many and we're gonna go through all of them in, in future videos but in this video the thing I like about Weathermatic is that I'm using a machine screw not a wood screw so a lot of valves that when you're picking them it's a wood screw and that means it's screwing right into the plastic this has a brass bushing in it right here and when I screw it in I can hand tighten it then I can take a socket wrench and just put it right on top and ratchet it. If it's down on the hole, I can put an extension on it, put a drill, like a DeWalt drill, and go zoop, 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 and always crisscross when you're tightening. So I'm hand tightening here till it's snug, okay? And then I would take a normal wrench like here, and then I'm gonna tighten and snug it up. But now, if I had a wood screw or a screw that had a Phillips on top or a screwdriver, I could over tighten that and strip the valve out. But with this, you're never gonna strip it out. So in the design of this valve, uh, I love that it's a machine screw right into a brass bushing. So all your valves, you wanna look, see, so this is even the, the, the black valve that they have, it's molded. You can see that it's nice and shiny and it's machined. This is their silver bullet. Here's the machine, it's right in. So the screw would just screw right inside of it. It's very nice nice and tight it goes in I can't strip it out you can see it coming in and out here I can tighten it up snug it up with a with a, any kind of wrench or a socket and I don't have to worry about stripping it out that's a, that's an awesome feature on any valve that you'll see and it's normally not in the economical uh, valves and your cheaper valves you're gonna have like a Phillips head or a screwdriver that's not gonna have on there now your solenoid you're gonna use would be this one right here now they have a nice round solenoid, uh, long lasting with a nice rubber piece right here with a little spring on it. It goes right here, it seals in. And they have this with a, a brass thread too, which is really nice. Now this just all screws in, boom, it's in there. Awesome solenoid, always make sure that you get the round one. They, many, many years ago, they used to make the square one. If it's lasted and it changed it and you get a, a valve and you have a square one, you have been able to use that solenoid for a while. But if I go out to a job site and I see the square solenoid, I always upgrade it to the round solenoid. It has a better ohms reading on it and it's a much better solenoid. So I always look at it and think, if I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna check everything out and open this valve up, I'm gonna end up make sure I put a new solenoid on it, new diaphragm on it. If I have to replace the valve, I'm gonna replace it with another Weathermatic if it has all Weathermatic in the field. And I will probably put a ball valve on the side and I'm gonna turn it off as an isolation valve because if I had a ball valve over here and I turned it off, I could work on this valve, take the bonnet off, put a new diaphragm on, and it would be really easy to replace anything. An isolation valve, which is a uh, valve right where the main water that's coming in is always turn that off be able to work on the valves and be able to uh, work on that so this is a clear valve but it's one of their most popular valves and they come in gray and they come in black they do have a very nice commercial upgraded this is the bonnet on their larger 
awesome diaphragm. As you can see, they go with a different type of material on their diaphragm. So it can be used in reclaimed water, anything else that you're using it for. If there's any chlorine, it's not gonna rot the diaphragm. It's not a buna in. It's a much better material. And Weathermatic has been using this great material on, it's always white and always on all their product for many, many years. So this is a more of a commercial diaphragm, a valve bonnet right here. So they have their economical one, which is this one without the flow control handle. Awesome valve, really good. But if you gotta be where you have to be conservative on your pricing, you may wanna not go with a flow control handle. I always use a flow control handle and always recommend using one. But that's just what I feel because I like to have that adjustment on my sprinkler heads and be able to adjust the flow. So this valve right here would be in a silver bullet. You can see it here, comes in. There's Weathermatic, you can go to their website and check out all their stuff on it, it's awesome. Then they have their black valve, which is really cool. And then their commercial valve here, which is a black top on it. And then they're bigger, so they're inch and a half and two inch, all the way up to three inch will have these nice diaphragms with the white material on it. Really, really uh, good for reclaimed water or any kind of dirty water application. This works out really good for it. Very easy, it's really nice to take apart. On the economical valve, you'll get the diaphragm and it's all molded in one like this. So this, this diaphragm, heavy duty, well molded, but if it goes bad, you just throw the whole thing away and buy a new diaphragm. With this one, you can take the screw out right here, replace it and just buy the rubber goods and replace that. Even on their small brass, here it is right here. Many, many, I mean, there are valves out there for 50, 60 years and you can switch out here. So here's a brass valve that they made and it's a heavy duty, beefy brass valve. It is awesome. Uh, if I wanna buy a valve and say, I'm not gonna ever have to replace the valve at all, I'm gonna go with the Weathermatic brass valve here and I'm gonna get the best diaphragm that they have on the market. I'm gonna put, it has the hole right over the solenoid. I got my little diaphragm hole that's real close here. I'm gonna put that over the top. They got a spring. Don't ever pull on the spring. Some people get it, I'm gonna pull on the spring or I'm gonna crunch it, I'm gonna cut some off. This is exposed to be helping because we got an 80-20 rule. So the water comes in, it fills up the bonnet, and we've got, it's larger on the bonnet. The bonnet is always larger on top than the seating area right here, okay? So this is the seating area right here. This diaphragm goes right over here on top. Then here's this then this is going to go right on top here. And then I'm going to put the screws in right like that. Awesome valve. I have seen these valves out in the field on job sites that I have been to, and, and I've seen them be 30, 40 years old, and they're still working perfectly fine, and people put a new solenoid diaphragm, and they will be there for another 20, 30 years. But what I like it is that it is a reverse flow valve. It's very heavy duty. And what it is, is that a hundred PSI comes into the valve here. It tries to get into the top. It goes through that little weeping hole that's in the diaphragm and pressures on top of the valve, okay? So if you've got a hundred PSI coming in, you've got 80 PSI on top pushing it and pounds per square inch is gonna shove that diaphragm down and force it down, okay? Then when we put the solenoid on it, which that you, you can see the little solenoid here. This little plunger covers the rubber hole that's right here. And so it stays closed, but when it, it's like this, holding on top of that little hole. When it pushes up over the top of it, oh, there's a little weep hole here. And what that does, it takes the water from the top, shoves it down to the downstream side and pushes the water out. Now, the high 80 PSI pressure is overcompensated by the little hole and makes it come out. So remember again, I'm gonna go over one more time. The water comes in 100 PSI on average, okay? The bottom seating area is smaller than the larger part of the bonnet. The 80% of the pressure is gonna be up here. It shuts it. When I give it 24 volts, it opens up, pulls the plunger up. When the plunger comes up, that little hole drops the water, taking all the pressure off the upper part of the bonnet dropping it and letting it go downstream, okay? And it opens the diaphragm and opens it up. You can just take this little flap right here 
and the plunger would be setting on it and I just turn the little flap and it lifts up the plunger and that's what makes this valve come on manually. So I have my flow control handle here, I have my solenoid, and I have my manual bleed right here on this valve. So all I can say is that I've known Weathermatic for a long time. Their brass valves, their plastic valves are very good. It's a high commercial valve. You will not see it in a consumer uh, retail store, but you will see it in all your commercial distributors that are uh, stocking Weathermatic distributors. And uh, it is a very good valve. If you have it in the field, I would do the best job I could to purchase the solenoids, purchase the diaphragms, replace it, and get another 30, 40 years of use out of it. So thank you very much, and we'll be talking more about valves in another video. Have a great day.